bows. They are absolute garbage in Elden Ring, or so we are told. The question is, however, how do we go from this to this? And is it enough for me to beat all the Remembrance bosses? I know with a thousand tries, anyone would be able to beat all the bosses with a bow. But is it realistic for you, and an average player like me, to beat them with only four tries? And to answer that, I start this challenge. Well, in order to beat Godric the Grafted, the first Remembrance boss, we need to get stronger gear to use in this run. This run will have a total of three stages of building good sets in order for us to do the best we can. First things first, we have to get our proper weapon and make sure that we are not complete trash with the bow in the first place. So on the way to get our basic supplies like our mount, our summoning bell, and so many arrows, we will get off some practice shots. So, what will my build be? This is a great question that you may be asking me. So, let's start with the phase one weapon. For that, first we must make our way to the hellhole known as the California of the Lands Between, Caleb, and fasten in my little Dorito crust to tarnish because we will be here for a while. The good news is, most of what we need is along a very easily followed path, until it's not. Most of you probably know what I'm getting now, but for those of you who don't, the main weapon of phase one is the serpent bow, found in this little side cave. After a bit of rot swamp parkour, we now have the weapon that we need for this little experiment. But remember, I said that we would be in Caleb for a bit. Well, the phase one talisman is here also, further south and next to Red Main Castle, in this siege tower with a few soldiers on it. Climb up, open the chest, boom, arrow sting talisman. Sadly, that's it for gear in phase one. Just remember to keep your equipment load light throughout this whole try in order for us to have light rolls and more immunity frames with said rolls. Back on the topic of arrows, this store will be your best friend and your worst enemy through most of this challenge until we get the ability to make copious amounts of arrows that we want. The arrows we want for the first stage of the run will be serpent arrows and blood arrows. Found at the store in Caleb, like I said, we spend a lot of time in this lovely place. <laughs> and the others are craftable and the ingredients are easily farmed. These arrows become easier to craft later in the game once you take out a bell bearing hunter and on alive a certain merchant in Mog's domain who sells the blood roses needed to craft them. But while in phase one we do it the hard way. Oh boy. Right, so on our checklist we have our gear and our arrows. Now it's time to see if I can even do this. My first big test is Mr. Brickwall Margaret the Omen. When the game first came out, this man stopped so many people from going any further. So if I can't beat him with this build, I won't be able to do it at all in my opinion. The stakes for these bosses are that I have four lives to bring the Remembrance bosses down. And I let a friend of mine decide a second restriction. The only spirit ashes that I'm allowed to use have to also be archers like myself. So back to Margit the Fell Omen. And even though this fight wasn't the prettiest in Elden Ring history, I managed to bring down the first challenging boss decently quick. I breathe a sigh of relief because this seems like it's more doable for me than I thought it would be. But now I have to get ready for the first real remembrance boss. While I start prepping for Godric the Grafted, why don't you slam that like button and subscribe to the channel while you're at it so you can be notified when I try to do other challenges like this one. Quickly we make our way through the rest of Stormbell Castle, and before we know it, we stand before the first actual remembrance boss. Godric the Grafted is is a pretty basic fight, and most people who were able to defeat Margit had no issue with this boss. So how will I fare with my stick launcher? Let's find out. We come across Godric talking to his dead dragon, like normal, and swiftly make our way through his first phase. As a small addendum to my spirit ash rule, if there is a golden summon sign before a boss chamber, I am allowed to use that, especially if it leads to upgrades later in their quest line. I don't know about you guys, but I think there are way too many bosses in this game willing to remove body parts to try to take you down, <laughs> but whatever. And like that, we move on to phase two of his fight, and it's over. I wasn't expecting this run to be so simple, but it seems like the bow may just be a bit more powerful than we were led on to believe. With my confidence soaring, I decide to do something crazy and get an early start on my second phase gear for this run. While getting the gear needed for phase one, I got two halves of the Dectus Medallion. So going to the Atlas Plateau to get the talisman that will start bringing the build together will be no problem. After a claustrophobic fight, we take down a demi-human queen 
and acquire the Ritual Sword Talisman. This little bad boy here gives us a 10% power boost as long as we're at full health. And this is the reason I mentioned earlier that it is important to stay in light gear loadout. The invincibility frames will make this so much easier for us to maximize this benefit. Now it's time to complete the phase two loadout and try to take out one of the harder remembrance bosses in the game. Come with me as we make our way back to the site of grace where we got the arrow sting talisman. Now that we are here, we simply take this portal and we are in Red Main Castle, home of General Radon. And would you look at that? It seems like we got here just in time for the Radon Festival. We talked to some old friends and some new faces before speaking to the crier of the festival. And I start wondering that maybe I got too ambitious as I make my way down the elevator. But I really want to finish the phase two build as fast as I can. And Radon's bow is an integral part of this phase of the build. So I touch the portal and there he is. And after a less than glorious start getting hit by his first shot, I grab a couple of my golden friends. I get the timing better as the fight continues and I make my way in for some shots. After a lot of work, my first attempts ends in failure. So I refocus and go in for round two. This time, I almost immediately start doing better and quickly get Radon distracted from me so that I can quickly apply some poison to him. This time, we burn him straight into phase two, and I hope that I'm able to dodge his comet form. I was legitimately concerned that Radon would end this run because I decided to take him so early in the run, but after a single life, the great general dies and we get his remembrance, which allows us to get the final piece of our phase two build, his very own bow. If you would have done this fight differently or think I should do it differently in my next challenge run, let me know in the comment section below. Killing Radon with a bow at level 51 has made me feel invincible, and so I very disrespectfully destroyed the Glintstone Dragon Smarag to get the key of Raya Lucaria's Academy, so that I can just speed run to my next remembrance boss, Queen Rinala. Not very far in, I get stopped by Radagon's old pet, the Red Wolf, and I put down the Guardian and rush through the rest of the Grand School. Before we know it, I'm standing in front of Queen Rinala's chambers. Obliterating her first phase, I get cocky, and my overconfidence leads to a quick loss to her in her second phase. But that's okay, I still have three more lives, and I know how I messed up my dodges. However, in round two, I start getting overrun by her damn spirit ashes, and start to wish I had brought a few of my own. Even with all that, I prevail over the Queen of the Full Moon and acquire another remembrance for all my troubles. With the defeat of Rinala, we hit a bit of an impasse. I need to decide which direction that I have to go in this massive map. I can go to Volcano Manor, the capital, or Mog's Domain. However, I decide that I'm going to head over to Ronnie and join her employ, so that I can continue on my way to two other Remembrance bosses. With all the bosses that I've already defeated, I don't fear Ronnie's Guardian as I step through the fog wall in the arena of the Royal Knight Loretta. Even though she is not as tough as Phase 2 Rinala, I start to realize that those with tracking spells might become a bit of a problem as this run goes on. But for now, we push through, dropping the shade of the proud knight and make my way up to join with Ronnie's quest line. Like I said before, this will allow me to access both the Regal Ancestor Spirit and Estelle. Way easier, and considering the Regal Ancestor is the first of the two, I decided to get some practice in on his lesser form, which also allows me to get my first usable Spirit Ash, the Ancestor of Follower Ashes. Even though the Ancestor Spirit wasn't that hard, I decided to get the final bow and new weapon for Phase 3 of this build. For this, we take a detour to the capital, to the Avenue Balcony, side of Grace. Go down this flight of stairs, jump over this balcony to the right, make your way up the path a bit. Quick right, left turn, follow the path until you get to the stairs. Jump on the roofs like this, and now we have a lovely new bow. Now you might be asking, why discard the bow I have for this new bow? Well, this is a long bow that allows you to do jump shot tricks, just like the short bow, and has the barrage skill that allows for faster application of status effects like Frost, Scarlet Rot, and Bleed. Speaking of status effects, now that we are getting closer to the in-game bosses, the poison we have been using falls off a bit, so it's time to try and start using Phase 3 arrows when possible. We are still going to use Bleed arrows, however, now we will be trying to use Storm arrows and Scarlet Rot arrows with bosses that it affects the most. And with us being in the end game, we will still be using Radon's bow with its Ash of War on the bigger bosses like Dragons and Estelle. So let's go test out our new equipment, shall we? Now, for those of you who don't know, I know it looks the same. Well, it is okay, but this one can heal and it's technically a Remembrance boss, so I have to fight it anyway. 
and we are not going to talk about the condition that I find myself in entering the arena either. Let's just erase this, okay? We enter the fog wall and for the first time in this run I decide to use a spirit ash. It's only poetic that I use the one I got from the lesser spirit to fight the greater of the two. And before we know it we have his health to- Ah! Well, damn it, there it goes up again. Okay, now he's dead. Uh, what the hell? Oh, well, never mind. Let's try this one more time. Whew. With all of his spirits no longer alive, now he shouldn't be able to heal. And finally, we drop this big deer and collect another of our objectives. Okay, so we have defeated two of Santa's reindeer. I figure I might as well get access to Mog's Domain for a couple reasons. One, he is a remembrance boss, and two, I can reach the level cap that I set for this run. Most of us gamers know that if we try hard enough, we can just out-level our problems. And so that I wouldn't just do that and make this challenge video like it's a joke, I set my cap at 100, which is between the recommended levels of 80 to 120 for beating the game. I achieve my goals here and decide to come back for Mog later. First I want to continue down Ronnie's quest and take down Estelle, plus Mog needs a couple of special items that I do not quite have yet. On my way to Estelle's chamber I pick up the Mimic tier, and because I'm an archer, so is he. And then I switch over to Radon's Lion Bow with its Ash of War and I hope to just melt this sky bug. And at first, this fight is just me getting slapped around, wondering if I'll ever even be able to do this. I take several laser blasts and tail swipes before I even get a small bit of damage off, and then it's my turn to put out the damage. Over half his health is gone, and like always, I believe in my hype too much when I get too shotted by his meteor. No way! Oh, 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 shit! Look at that health bar! That's nuts! While on the edge of my seat, I fire a few more shots and the beast goes down. I run over to see a wrecked Ronnie and get my prize for her quest line, her hand in marriage, and a big sword I can't use before we head back to the capital and take out the king. But before we reach him, I'm stopped by the shade of his father, good old Godfrey. This fight could be hard if you don't jump over his stomp attacks, but with my build mostly online, I have a lot less trepidation with this fight than I did with ones earlier in the game. After a couple of missteps and several good double shots, the first Lord Shade is no more, and now the path is open for his disfigured son. I grab Melina, summon my mimic, and step into the throne room. Chamber. Balcony? The hardest part about this boss is always the fact that he could probably place gold in the gymnastics competition with ease as he dodges around my shots. However, his most damaging attacks are easily avoided with all the distance. The bow affords you in his fight. After a couple close calls, I remember my training and sit back and pick my shots with care, and like his lesser form, the king falls and the remembrance is mine. There's really no reason to change track now, so I just continue on my way down the main storyline. This brings me up through the mountaintops of the giant, which I pretty much ignore in order to get to the fire giant, my next true opponent. Now I'm on a roll and nothing can stop me. Hell, I haven't even died in the last few bosses and all this guy is is a big pool of hit points. Not much else. Well, that's what I thought going in, but between his DBZ fireballs and his big ass play of his, he quickly burns through my first life. With a newfound respect for this big bastard, I return to the brawl. At first, I try to be cautious and quickly start doing worse than I did in my first attempt. With only two healing flasks left, I hit a second wind. And after what feels like forever, I finally apply Scarlet Rot to the Fire Giant and breathe a sigh of relief. Because now all I have to do is stay away from him and win. Or so I thought. Until in disbelief, the rot wore off. If any of you know why this happened, let me know in the comment section below, because I thought Scarlet Rot stayed on once applied this way. Well anyway, with all hope out the window on victory with this fight, one more fireball, and now I'm down half my lives. I'm starting to feel the stakes now. Is this where my run will end? It's time to change tactics, if I'm going to at least say I gave this fight my all. So I put on Radon's bow for some of his reign to see if that's the missing component to this fight. Immediately the slower pace seems to be doing better for me. I drain his health down and I break his leg brace with most of my potions left. As my mimic tier dies we enter phase 2 and I'm at wit's end. I send a prayer out with Master Hewig and hope that due to him being less mobile that I'll be able to finish this here. The fight rages on even though my health gets low. I know that I have this in the bag until bad luck strikes in the form of something hitting me from off screen. And like that, I'm on my last life. This time I fuse with two playing styles that I have for my Mimic tier. He will have the heavy bows and gear, and for me it will be the faster play style. Again, everything seems to be going good, and I even have my Mimic tier with me when we enter phase 2. But Mr. Giant accesses his inner Vegeta and spams two blasts into me, and unlike when Vegeta does this, it actually kills me, ending my run.
I've never done a run like this, and it sucks that it ended the way it did. So I'm going to leave it up to all of you. Like an old arcade machine, if you want to see me continue, just say so in the chat. If it gets enough continues, I'll go back into this character and try the other Remembrance bosses that I have access to, and then come back and see if the Fire Giant will actually be the brick wall that stops this run for good. If not, well, this will be the end of this character, and I'll try something different next time. As they say in Epic Rap Battles of History, you decide! I hope you all enjoyed the video, and we'll see you again next time.